How's that? They wish up. There's the, less glare. They right? wish up. The, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's good. What do you think, Jessica? Very nice. All right. <laughs> Did you grow up in Canada? Were you alive in the 90s? Did you love YTV? Fuck yeah, you did! Welcome back to the show that gives Canadian 90s nostalgia the respect it deserves. Oh my goodness! Welcome to You, Me, and YTV, and the holiday specials continue. I have united more of student bodies. We have used the power of the holidays to bring them together. Okay, so guys, um, I, I just talked to the other guys and we were talking about holidays and traditions. Uh, Is that better? It's a little yeah. better, yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe I'll just it's not go. Great, but it's better. <laughs> it's actually worse. <laughs> you look like a light bulb, but it's okay. Basically, you guys come from here, but you live in Los Angeles. What do you guys do for the holidays? Do you come back here? Or do you stay in LA? Me, um, I often go back to Montreal to see uh, my family, um, but I'm not doing that this year because most of them are in Florida. In Florida. <laughs> Yeah, so again, Florida. So I'm going to visit in Florida later. So what do I do for the holidays? Um, you know, very little. I eat luck. I mean, I'm not, this is not a good interview for me because I'm not, I'm not, I don't do a lot of holiday celebrating down here. Jess, do you do anything? Um, I, I have always had Christmas celebrating boyfriends since I've been a grown up, I think. So I have hijacked, I have, I have like, I've been clinging on to the back of Santa's sleigh just getting dragged in, um, but I like it. Um, and I always get a little bit of Hanukkah love too from from the family. So this year I'll be up in Northern California visiting with my boyfriend's family up in beautiful Sonoma, which is wine country. Awesome. Can't beat that. So speaking of Hanukkah, Jamie, your uh, web series, Yid Life Crisis, has been killing it. And uh, <laughs> your latest episode was fantastic. And I knew about this episode because Jessica shared it. I saw I saw Jessica's oh. link and it was uh, fantastic. Thanks, Jess. Thanks, Fa Jess. Yeah. Fantastic. When you say we killed it, do you mean like we killed the holidays? <laughs> <laughs> this year, Christmas and Hanukkah fall on the very same day, which means it's all the more reason for us to come together. And nothing brings people together more than music. With that in mind, we present you with the Yid Life Crisis Guide to the holiday classics. But it was just so well done and so well played and it, it's, you know, it's nice to hear you sing again, Jamie. And it's an interesting context, but it's still nice to see you <laughs> sing and play. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan, and thanks, Jess, for sharing it. Uh, so we celebrated with a little musical extravaganza, and uh, as we point out in the in the video, um, a lot of the great Christmas songs were written by Jewish composers. <laughs> I think maybe, you know, what, what, what the video points to, this has been pointed out before, is that it's, it's not only a Christian holiday, it's, it's, it's for everyone. Christmas can be for everyone. Anyways, a lot of, a lot of people have watched our video in the last week, and they, they're definitely not all Jews. So I think it's, it's more, it's more the, see, the spirit of the season than, than anything about the holiday itself. I can kind of see, like, Chris, uh, like Santa Claus and, uh, I guess, Moses, like, teaming up, like, lethal weapon or something, considering the, yeah. it's at the same time right now. I you know. should write that movie. Anyway, anyway Jess. Biblical Moses, like in robes with the staff and, you know. Like yeah, they look like Jedis, I guess, right? Yeah. What about, like, <laughs> <laughs> to co you know, televisions Cody and Flash Tina team up for, you know, Je Moses and Mother Mary. <laughs> and, you know, Jessica Goldapple as... Mary Magdalene is. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, so sorry. I Mother Mary, oh, Mary Magdalene? Sorry, I meant, I meant Mother Mary. I meant Mother Mary. <laughs> You're mixing just... up your Marys, Jamie. I'm you sorry. Oi, you want to talk miracles? Eight days. The oil burned for eight whole days. Everybody sing. <laughs> you mentioned Jess and I live in L.A., it's something about being here and seeing, you know, Christmas lights and Christmas trees with no snow is <laughs> odd, you know, and there's no like I see the tree behind you and it looks gorgeous and everything. And 
Uh, my neighbors out here have trees going on, but there's something weird about the fact that there's no winter, real winter going on. I don't know, Jess, did you ever think about that? Did you ever? You know, it's been so long since I actually went back to Canada for Christmas because I just don't even have the clothing anymore to wear in the wintertime. So I have, I don't think I've seen snow on Christmas in forever, but I think, I think you're definitely right. I think there's something of them, like the magic of, of snow that's, that makes Christmas Christmas. But, uh, you know, here in L.A., you can go into Hollywood and they're selling the trees and uh, I was driving in Santa Monica yesterday and there's ice skating outdoors there. Then a funny thing happened at the station that night. Mrs. Morton's heart grew. Her pantyhose was too tight. And all the students of Edison, except Tony Bennett, joined in together with pure holiday sentiment. You guys only did one uh, Christmas special in and, and the run of student bodies. And um, Jessica, you played a, a very disgruntled elf at one point. You just did not seem very pleased to be in an elf outfit at all. Is that because you feel that Flash was Jewish or that the costume is demeaning? <laughs> um, I think Flash thought of herself as too much of a badass to be wearing an elf costume, probably. Um, but, I mean, as dry as Flash was, she had to be at least part Jewish. Do you think, Jamie? Yeah, I, I, well, look, by that point, weren't we already melding with our characters? And <laughs> yeah. There was no um, way around it. I seem to recall being kind of amused wearing it. Like, I think I was a little mortified, but also it was kind of fun. It was a while ago, but I think my, if memory serves. I, I wish we had rewatched this episode, Jess. We should have gotten like blazed and watched this thing before. You know Never what? Too late. I mean, this is my favorite time of year. I hate Christmas. Really? You? Well, why don't you do what I do? Celebrate Hanukkah. <laughs> um, but I, I'll be honest, I don't remember very much about the episode at all, uh, if I'm being truthful here, but the two things that just popped into my head, Jess, you know where I'm going with this? No. Okay, shit, I hope I'm right about this. I, I think it was this episode. It's got to be this episode. First of all, the, the reason why I remember it, I believe, is because at one point the, the editors or the producers made a, uh, a blooper reel, and this moment from this episode made the blooper reel, and that's the scene that I have in my head, not the episode. <laughs> Things about the blooper. One is, okay, so is this the one where I give her the compass? The compass? Yeah. Um, so that no matter where you are next year, you'll always be able to find your way back to me. I give her a gift of a compass in the episode. So there's yeah. two things I remember about this. One is... Uh, I hated that sweater. I wanted to kill someone because it was this very high neck yeah. uh, turtleneck. And I was like super uncomfortable and I was very preppy and I felt uncomfortable in it. And I think I had the leather jacket over the sweater and it probably looked good. Like probably I, I have no fashion sense. and I don't know anything about clothes. So I'm sure that whatever the des designer put me in was nicer than anything I owned. But I was just uncomfortable in this very high neck J. Crew white you know, yeah. Christmassy kind of Christmas sweater. And the reason why I remember this scene at all is because it was in the blooper reel. I hand her the compass and it's in this little velvet box or something. And on one of the takes, we took out the compass or put on top of it, we put a condom. And I'm pretty <laughs> sure, Jess, do you remember this? Now I remember. Yeah, okay. And I think you're blushing, Jess, okay? And you deserve it. I'm, I, well, he stole my condom, and I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I, by the way, I, I might be talking total shit right now, but I think, Jess, I think it was your idea. <laughs> but then, <laughs> it okay, okay, maybe it wasn't. <laughs> okay, I, I wish it were. And maybe no, it was. If it no, was. It, no, it was either yours or, or Mark Taylor. You know, our nickname for Mark on the show was uh, The Instigator. Mm -hmm. And I have a feeling he probably used to, you know, he probably whispered, like, take this condom and put it in this, in this thing. Guys, guys, it's Christmas, remember? We can work together. Anyways, this is like 21-year-old humor uh, at the time when <laughs> we thought it was very, very funny. It is. <laughs> and the great thing about this cast is that it really probably could have been almost anybody's idea. Yes. <laughs> yes. We were having fun by that point, for sure. And uh, 
that that's all I remember about the episode. I, I swear to God. I mean, now that you said Jess in the elf costume, I remember that now too. But I, I yeah, what else happens? What's going on? Budget cuts. I have orders from the school board to save money. So this music department is getting trimmed. School board memo. There are going to be more budget cuts in the thinking of losing one of the school papers. Where'd you get this? Well, let's just say it uh, fell off Morton's desk. <laughs> the memo doesn't say which paper is going to be cut. Could be the voice. So the two newspapers realize they have to come together and have a, a benefit Christmas concert in order for both papers to survive. So they had to book a special musical act and are trying to get Sting and a bunch of people. And they end up somehow, during a commercial break, booking um, just Tony, Tony Bennett. Bennett. Yes. I swear to God. Oh, yeah. my God. Oh. And, and, and then he couldn't know. get it, so Miss Morden comes out and sings her ass off. And, uh, That's right. And then, and then you give her a condom. Yeah. And then it ends with all of us, yeah. all of us uh, singing, Oh, come all ye condoms. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's not it. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Of course, Michelle sang. She sang the shit out of that. Yeah. And she came out and she sang, like, Merry Christmas Baby or some, some blues it number. Was, she, it was the Edison High Blues, Jamie. The Edison High Blues, right. And she yeah. just sang the hell out of that thing. Yeah. That was awesome. That was smart. It was smart. It would have been bad because, like, it Sting. So people are thinking, oh, my God, they got Sting on this show? Yeah. And then, oh, no, they didn't get Sting. Well, then they got Tony Bennett. They got legend Tony mm. Bennett. Oh, no, there's no Tony Bennett. So if they're going to come out with some surprise ending, it better be good. And it was good because yeah. Michelle is an awesome yeah, in blue. in fairness, player. Michelle is the Tony Bennett of Montreal. So She really yeah. is. Um, really as Mick said, he's just like the, you know, the music that would be like live singing later on. Like you sing the Valentine's Day song and um, Katie sang a couple of songs on a different occasion. The, but this time around, it was like Mick, as he puts it, he was like, it was me pretending to play guitar. Mark Taylor pretending to play bass. And Jamie, even though you can play, pretending to play keyboard for this song. That's right. That's right. That's and right. What, I totally. Wow. What really <laughs> struck me about it when I was watching this clip is that Mark Taylor looked insanely concentrated on this fake playing of the bass. You know, he was yeah. he was watching what he was doing, yet he, yeah. I don't think he knew what he was doing. Like, I don't, I'm not sure. Does he play? I'm not sure. Uh, At the time, I don't think he played because I remember playing that one chord when he had to open. Like, there they'd show Romeo playing guitar, yeah. but if he would just strum a chord and yeah. then stop. Listen, he's he's a he's a phenomenal actor and one of my like honestly one of my all time favorite people. I love the guy. Yeah. I don't even think he knows how to play the the guitar on like the Guitar Hero like with the <laughs> button. Okay. Like he, <laughs> no, he did not. He definitely was not playing that and did not know what, what the hell was going on. But, but, but he he faked it real well. Okay. Well, you guys uh, were clearly very tight, and you guys were roommates. You both are kids from Cote St. Luke. Uh, did you guys ever hang out around the holidays, like Hanukkah and stuff like that, when you guys weren't shooting? I don't know. Honestly, every every day that Jess and I lived together was a holiday. <laughs> what would you call a holiday? A holiday of comedy. <laughs> a holiday of comedy of errors. It's hmm? gone. Morning, Miller. You know, you're awful goofy looking when you're asleep. Huh? Flash, how'd you get in here? I'm sensing a lot of hostility here. A fair amount of repressed anger. Now, no one said living together would be easy. I remember us doing a little bit more for Passover. We, uh, we right. made up a whole um, blues concert version of all the Passover songs. That's right. That's right. That's right. On the old piano. That's right. We did do that. So, yeah. you know, we weren't total atheists. Yeah. In, in yeah. The Yes. <laughs> Pretty well, I bought it, and now I'm not so sure. Oh, I'm sorry, Cody, but I don't do life-changing advice. That would involve me getting mixed up in other people's problems, and I have a strong aversion to meddling. No, you don't. <laughs> you love to meddle. You're right. But I'm going to stay out of this particular situation. What was your first impressions of each other? How did you guys, like, you guys told said that uh, 
Jessica, you were like he was your counselor at camp, but what, what was your honest first impression of each other? When we met at camp or when or we met in, again? Let's say comparatively. What, 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 what were each other like <laughs> at camp and what were each other like in the audition? My thought was he seems a few years older. Hmm. Oh, okay. And wiser. <laughs> I'm uh, very astute. Well, Jamie was... <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid because <laughs> I don't want to create any new buzzwords for James. <laughs> you douche! Uh, <laughs> okay. You could say anything. You could say anything. No, well. I mean, J- Jamie's always been super funny and, and has always been like a total character. And, and even at camp, I remember... Like, I <laughs> just be sitting having like four, 13, 14 year old girl, girl talk on the thing, and he'd come up and be like, What are you guys talking about? Oh, like, God. Probably need him. You know, just, just random. Hey, girls, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's me. It's me, your counselor, Jamie. What are you girls talking about? <laughs> that, that makes me sound really just bad. Shut up. I'm not even going to say anything about Jamie ever again. Uh, always- <laughs> no, please. It makes me laugh. Uh, I just I never he just it's it's easy for him to not to like get you out of taking yourself too seriously and to just laugh for a moment. That's your skill. Is that okay to say? Yes, definitely. Okay. That's a you... great, that's high <laughs> praise. Um, I don't know. I guess what I remember about Jess was that my I guess my real first recollection is is more like when we met up again at the audition. It's like, oh yeah, you were the girl from camp, and you were like. You were one of the you were one of the campers when I was a junior counselor, and you know we had some sort of, I guess, reunion moment. But pretty much right away we clicked and just started, I think, joking around, um, you know, at the audition, and and right away when we started shooting, because you know we come from the same place and we already had like this history of knowing each other from years before, and we'd come we'd gone to the same camp and gone to the same schools, and we grew up around the corner from each other. So you know, that, that was an easy one. I remember clicking with Jess right away. I remember clicking with Mick right away at the audition because we were both at McGill at the time. And, you know, Ross, I was just, I was probably just jealous of Ross because he was, he was the cool one who had been on TV his whole life. And he was a, you know, Canadian TV icon. And I was jealous (laughs) of him. Kick his ass probably. I mean, the thing is, and that's why you could see that you could still talk to us about all this stuff 20 years later, 20 years later. This summer. is that, you know, we all really just got along right away. It was good casting. We all just had fun and we all became, you know, fast friends, basically. And I guess some of them knew each other. Like Katie and Ross had known each other. I think Ross and Nicole, right, had been on Eric's World. Am I right about that? Yeah. It's a sad day when I have to find out things from Horace. If you guys want to talk, maybe I should go home. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't ask the others, but I want to ask you guys. Um, basically, the vibe of the pilot is way different, kind of different than the rest of the show. Everyone's hair is different. How much of a time difference was it between when you guys shot the pilot and went to series? We shot the pilot in October, I feel like, or fall of 97. That's what I had in my head. And then we went to series in the summer of 98. Does that sound right to you? Uh, I want to say that we, uh, I'm trying to figure it out because when we shot the pilot, I think I was still 17 years old. Do you have any idea what botulism does to the intestines? I do. <laughs> I would have used high speed film if I knew how fast those chunks were. Uh, no, there was a long time. There was a long time between when we shot it, like I'd say at least six months. Um, we, I don't know. We got better hair during those six months. I don't know. I don't think my hair, the hair was, was very different. The hair was so very different. Yeah. Early 90s hair, yeah. and then episode two was late 90s hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then we didn't air the pilot anyways until later, right? Because they decided it, it, it didn't look the same. They knew it didn't look the same, and we had gotten better as a cast and everything. So they kind of they just buried that thing and somehow brought it back, the, the origin story. Yeah, there's an episode called The Time a time Capsule. Well, we're graduating in the year 2000, and she wants our class to create a time capsule. Great. You can put your article in it when it's finished. So how did you start student bodies anyway? And then they're like, well, and then... Right, and it looks like it's back in the, in this, in the 18th century. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm going to ask you guys this. As delightful, beautiful Jews, 
Uh, what are your favorite holiday movies that you would even find a tradition to watch around this time of year? Does it have to be Christmas or? Like- no, holidays, sir. Holiday. holiday. I always like watching It's a Wonderful Life. I know that's a cliche at this point because everybody likes it, but I think that's that's a really beautiful holiday tradition. And like it or not, I always watch A Christmas Story just because it's on 24-7. So that's a classic. Um, I'm trying to think of stuff that would like incorporate any kind of Hanukkah tradition, but I don't, I don't know that there is one. There's not enough. It's like the Jewish composers writing the Christmas carols. It's like the Jewish screenwriters are writing the. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let's be honest. Producing it, probably directing it. Is there like any amazing movies about Hanukkah that I should know about that you guys know? Because I'd love to. I'm I'm open for anything. I really just love film. There was there was talk. There was a talk last year in the last few years that Mel Gibson was going to direct the ultimate Hanukkah movie. Wait. This is not it, no, it's it's not a joke. It's not a joke. Um, and the thing is, it could be an amazing movie. And even though uh, Mel Gibson has had some troubles with the Jews <laughs> in the last few years, uh, I, I won't weigh in on that. Per se, I will say he is a phenomenal filmmaker, and that would have been a kick-ass movie. Because you know, I think most people don't. Story? What was it? Yeah, yeah, Um, yeah. I mean, it's a story of a rebellion. It's basically it's it's uh, it's it's about it's about a small band of rebels taking on a large army, and you know, it's a sort of underdog story, and there's there's mystical Star Wars elements to it. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is Star Warsian. I mean, yeah. It is a new hope. Um, there are there are Jedi's that are the Jedi Rebel or the Rebel Alliance against the the evil Hellenic Empire. Of course, it's much much more. I just want to say that Jedi's and rabbis <laughs> sound the same and can be used in a rap song. So, uh, Return of the Rabbi yeah. is a phenomenal George Lucas movie that was never made. It should be Return of the Rabbi and switch Return to Return of the Rabbi yeah. would be great. I think you should make it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. That's no. number two. We decided on for Ryan to make it. There yeah. you go. Yeah. And we have a lot of plans for you and your career. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, you know, in the meantime, in terms of, you know, what, what Hanukkah things that people can watch to uh, to celebrate and learn more about the holiday, I'd have to say watch Yid Life Crisis. That's Yid Life Crisis. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, tis the season for giving. Go to yidlifecrisis.com and support us by buying merchandise or making a tax-deductible donation and giving the gift of giving to, to us. us. Very, Check it out. Very thank well you for the plug. Thanks for letting me plug it. Well, thank you both for every, giving. Every Jewish elementary school has like a Hanukkah pageant where small children dress up as potato walkers and dreidels. Yes. I check one of those out. I yeah you can go, I actually I was gonna mention I one of my earliest memories and again it might be from a photograph or something that you know maybe is not a true memory but just something I've seen uh, my first foray into acting was playing the Hanukkah latke. I was too. What? Uh? I was too. Yes. <laughs> oh my god! You the latke. I five. Latka buddies. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the third movie. Latka <laughs> 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 buddies. Just Jessica Goldrop. <laughs> With a spatula in her hands. And Jamie <laughs> Elman. It's the greasiest thing to make. <laughs> All right. <laughs> everywhere. Latka <laughs> weapon. <laughs> and that's the buddy cop movie we're talking about. Latka weapon. That's it. Yeah. Starring a 14-year-old Jessica Goldapple and her counselor, Jamie Elman, in Latka Weapon. Okay. Is Mel Gibson the director? Yes. Yeah, that's yes. why Riggs. That's the connection. The passion of the Latka. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, my God. Man. We could do this all night, but we, we better not. <laughs> we Yeah, we could do this all night, but we shouldn't. <laughs> but like, <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, the critics panned it. <laughs> <laughs> good one, Jess. It's, uh, Jess, it's good to see you, but we should do this properly. Uh, yeah, you, know, you do live in the same city. We do. I mean, I, Jamie, Carpe I, 
a car, <laughs> car fake DM jet. Uh, I, I've been traveling a lot, but I, uh, I would love to see you. So we'll pick this up afterwards. Yes. And Ryan, it's on your video and, and how viral it is. It's awesome. Thank you. Thank so you. Cool. Thank you. And uh, uh, tell Melissa we say hi as well. I will. All right. Thanks to you. All right. Thanks to you Thanks both so much. Again. Happy, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Bye, guys. Happy, happy. Take care, Ryan. Bye. 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 Don't forget to subscribe, share, and tell all your friends that 90s nostalgia is still alive on You, Me, and YTV.